Hey everyone, welcome to Team Rad Titan. Today we're going to be looking at Ein Studios Star Wars Legacy Replica Quarter Scale Darth Vader. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Adam. As I was saying, we're going to take a look at Ein Studios Star Wars Legacy Replica Quarter Scale Darth Vader. Now, as the last review, wearing gloves, this isn't my piece. Um, this is one of my friend Sam's, uh, so I'm holding on to him uh, until he's able to ship it over to him. Um, but it arrived today, and he asked me to take a look to make sure everything was okay. Uh, so, well, let's get into it. So, this is made by Iron Studios, sold by distribution from Sideshow Collectibles. Only a thousand were made at this, and um, the retail price was six hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and nowadays, if you want this, it's, it's a grand or more, easy. Um, first of all, the base is huge. Quite light actually, considering the size of it, but makes makes sense. Don't want it to be too, be too heavy. Um, so. Comes in an art box that has this picture on the front. The Star Wars and Studios Regulus Replica Darth Vader on the top. And on the back is more of like a, a distance type shot of Vader. A lo lovely art box and it also comes with an instruction manual. Um, it shows you all the parts, what to assemble first, um, the different switch outs. But first, let's talk about switch outs actually. So, you have the right hand that can either be held with the left hand, or, or it's a clenched fist, and the lightsaber will clip onto his hook and drop down here. The other ones are left hand, as you can see, it's crossed and holding the lightsaber, or the other one is a reaching out, a pointing, or an, an, an angry type pose with the arm. Um, as well as the um, lights of the clip, as I mentioned before, this piece is the lightsaber is two separate. Obviously, a plug to go in there for the light up feature. Then you have the belt, which I believe is on the left side. That's a little switch that lights the green and red parts up. Separate little battery, as well as the chest piece. It's all got also a little battery inside. The only three, three things that light up here are that, that, and that. You have to, you'd have, when it's light up, lit up, you'd have to zoom in on it because um, it's a little bit faint and sometimes the, um, it has a little different effect where it goes from the top, light goes off, middle to the middle and the bottom stay on. Top and middle go off and light, the bottom stays on. And then all three light up again. Same with this, same with this the green especially, it flickers sometimes, um, which I think is a nice little cool little effect. So, a little bit on Darth Vader. We all know he came in the first episode, the original series, episode 4, 5, 6, and towards the end of episode 3, when Anakin turns into Darth Vader. Um, he's also been in the, um, the Star Wars Rebels uh, episode, uh, where Ahsoka Tano uh, fights Darth Vader. She hits, she hits with a lightsaber on his face and cuts down, cuts half of it side. You can see Anakin's face, um, but obviously it's a kid, so she wouldn't, we wouldn't really see what it looked like if it was in the movies, obviously. Um, but an utter iconic villain, um, and as we know, in Episode Six, turns good in the end, saves his son, kills the Emperor supposedly. Spoiler alert for Episode Nine. Um, but let's go into the base. So obviously it's set in Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back, on the planet Hoth, uh, inside the Rebel base. Now, first of all we have the metal base underneath the snow. I actually like this, it's, um, you can, it's like a, a faded um, grey metallic look. Then moving up to the snow. I like the snow effect, it's done, re it's done really really well. Um, the different, there's different shadings depending on where the light is and the scene is hitting it. Um, the other parts that come 
with the base is this piece, rads all the way and connects into this piping section. Another part of the piping section is This comes off, so it's back in. This piece also comes off and goes back in. And the wiring goes to the left and also powers up this light, as well as it can also goes out to the right side of Darth Vader. So now looking at the front, so the metal pathway with the walk on, rather than uh, walk on the snow. I love the way it's been sculpted, you've got all that little dents in the metal and the scratches and everything, it's all been covered up by snow. And the way it's been detailed, I mean that's really nice. Uh, as well as especially going back to the pipes, actually they've all got like um, you know different colorization. You've got black, uh, light blue, a bit of white, and tints of, tints of grey. And they've got snow effects all around them. I think that's really good. And um, the light at the front is um, it's it's resin on the actual light up. There's a few cracks on it, which obviously shows that it, you know it's it's fallen down, it's broken. Um, but I like the way the snow effect and you know the the bronze has been done on it. Looks really nice. So then we go into his boots. I love the weathering effect that's on his boots, all the way around and inside and on the other foot. So in terms of where he pegs in, he pegs in on his right boot at the back, and then you can see the footprint. Just move around here. I lift the cape up, we can see the footprint at the back here where he's now moving, he's now put the rest, he's put his boot and he's moved the rest of it and he starts to walk forward. Now underneath I like the fact that they've also webbed the boots underneath the, the, you know, the heel and um, the front part of the boot. I think that's looked really nice, nice detailing in there. And actually lifting the cape back up we can actually see you know, the, the rock it has been covered up by snow. I like the way it's um, it's been done a little bit. It's been a little bit's been the the snow has been melted as the light tip has gone past it, and you can tell the rock, especially in the piping area, as well. I think I think the snow effect and the rock has it's been sculpted beautifully. Um, I, I I have to give him credit on that. And also you can see actually where the burnt is from the pipe used to join. Uh, I'm assuming that must be um, like a couple of a couple of scenes backwards where maybe he's hit that pipe to get out of the way, who knows, but, and then we look at the cape, I love the way this has been done, so it's a mixed media cape, and the wiring from the neck all the way down, the sides, and then I love the fact that this has been covered in, this, you know, it's been stained uh, with, you know, with white paint, and it's been roughed up a bit, so it's, you know, it's, it's making it look like it's been dragged on the floor in the snow, because we know the cape is a bit, is a bit longer than his stance, um, but I, I love I love that effect, and you can sculpt it any way you want. Um, flows quite nicely. It even comes around the front over his left shoulder and a little bit over his right, depending on which arms you use. Um, if you have the ones with the arms stuck out, the pointing, or that, um, the cape goes back a little bit, just behind the shoulder blade. So moving back towards the suit, um, I love the way that um, the design of this has been done. So the indented metal. From especially from the shin pads at the front, and it's it's, got, it's, it's almost got like a um, it's got a very nice shine to it, which I really like you know the distinction between the suit, especially from the shin pads, and you've got it obviously the helmet and the chest plate and the chest plate. Um, I think that's really nice. So as we move up to his under suits and his under robes at the side, uh, the under robes are also mixed media. Um, but going back onto the under suit and as well as the flap at the front, that's also sculpted and it's not mixed media. Um, I like the way the, the design's been done of the little crinks and wrinkles in his pants as he's moving forward. Uh, I think that's very, very well done as well as the lining of the suit. And then as we move up, as I said before at the beginning, the belt is a separate piece. Um, you know, a little velcro strap at the back. Um, you have a little switch on the left one I believe that links up both of them. As I said, the green buttons and the little red light up. Look, sometimes they stay completely, um, you know, on all the time, and, and there's a little bit of flickering sometimes, which I think is a nice little touch. Then leading up to the arms. Now all the arms are, you know, 
the design of them and the shine and the paint um, as well as the shoulder, the shoulder pad all done very very well um, quite impressed by them obviously you know the, the, as I said before the, the, the twisting of the arm and then the little crinkles in the, in the fingers and the, mater the material of the gloves uh, and the stitching as well actually on the gloves you can't see it on this right hand but you can see it on the left the ind individual little stitching very nicely well done um, you know from a Darth, from a sculpt Darth Vader point of view this is um, this is this is very very well done and then if you look at the chest piece as well as I said before this comes off it's got a little switch at the back and clips back in the little three silver parts here with a little um, language underneath them light up flicker first one goes off second one goes off and the third one goes off and then go back on um, lovely little paintwork and then you know a little intricate, inter intricate little designing inside I think it's very well done uh, now we move up to the chest part and I like the distinction between the shiny black and the gunmetal grey um, in between each one and then obviously it leads up to his neck, a part of his a part of his helmet. Um, it's like a light. It's the the gunmetal grey underneath is the same colour as this, but then obviously as it gets higher up, it starts to go darker and then shade into the black. I think it's very 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 nice little touch. Um, part of the uh, ventilator, um, you can even see underneath and on the mask the little intricate wirings that's you know um, intertwined with each other that's a lovely little nice touch I have to say and then leading up to I didn't notice this at first when I, when I opened it and took it out of the box I thought the whole helmet was just all black but as I said, as I said you know the scum metal grain that's leading up to it the nose part and the cheeks as well as the you know, bridge of, towards the nose near towards the t um, you know the the indenting of the top of the head um, and especially on the cheeks as well, from certain angles, there's like it gives a different a look and a different shine. Um, and yeah, as I said before, looking back, I thought it was just all black, but I love the touch. You, from different angles, you can see a different look from depending on where you'd see it from at any view. I think that's very nicely well done. Now, leading up to the helmet, it's a lovely black shine, but around back there's a little smidge I can see it from I can see it from here block out light a bit there's a little bit like tint of like grey ever so slightly and I like that a lot uh, and there's also gonna be remember it's in it's in a scene and the lighting have a different effect based on what the the artist wanted it to wanted to try and represent and see um but lovely really it's lovely then as I said the cape is mixed media the cape it um, has like um towards around the neck. It's like um, it actually it actually it probably is actually leather. Uh, and then you have little two little clips hold onto a metal piece. It's meant to actually drop down and be underneath here, but because the metal's um quite strong, it actually goes up. But it's a slight a slight little slight little um you know nitpick, but that's not why you buy the piece. Um, and then obviously the mixed media cables. I said earlier in the review, you know, it's got wiring all the way down. You can shape it however you want. Um, and then, I mean, for a quarter scale, it's 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 a it's a very very big piece, but it's Darth Vader. It's it's meant to be. It's meant to be, you know, stand out really well. Um, what else? I, as I, I like going back to the um, the piping. I like the way the bronze effect has been done as like a little bit of um, tints of orange around the you know the ceiling of the piping the little screws and bolts have been done very well and um, the, the little dots of white as the snow has been sprinkled on them and everything I think it's right I think it's a very nice touch as well um, and then obviously there's a light up feature with this and yes it works I'm not gonna you know, not show it. So here we go. I'm going to turn it round. So the it's a it's a female and male plug that goes inside the uh, lightsaber he's holding on to, and goes all stretched all the way down. It is a rounded, so like like the, the Darth Maul piece. Um, with that one, there's more like a um, you know a 
a pyramid type shape or you know a, an arrow type shape at the top but I like the way this has been curved and it's, it's not it's not blunt it's rounded I think that's a very nice touch and then the other light up feature is actually this broken light and um, so I'm gonna have a look at them right now so I'll just let you know what the switch is just here. It needs three AA batteries uh, which also are provided with the item as well. So let's give it a go. So that's it with the lights on and then we're gonna turn it off and then turn the lights off. Ah. And there we go. So I'm just having a look at I'm just having a look at the camera, making sure you can see everything. Yeah. And I like the fact that when the lights aren't on it and the light shines up and it it's Darth Vader, you can see the different reflections from the lightsaber on, on his um, helmet, chest. Uh, you know the um, the box plate on his uh, on his sternum, and then the light obviously coming up and hitting and hitting the cloak in a different type of fashion as well as you've seen all the snow effects. Behind, um, sorry, not behind, um, underneath the cloak where the snow is, um, it takes it to a completely another level. Um, if you have this or you've you've got a pre-order or whatever, you will not be disappointed. It is phenomenal. Uh, a lot of people that I've spoken to consider this to be the best Darth Vader out there has been all that's been ever made. And I'd have to agree with them. Um, I'm finding hardly anything wrong with this piece whatsoever. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, it is an incredibly wonderful piece. Gorgeous detailing, lovely intricate design, creative features with the snow effects and the metals and the way he stance, you know, obviously with all the different switch outs to the way he wants to be portrayed or the, the way you want him to be seen in your collection. Um, just Iron Studios, bravo. Um, so I'm going to turn the light switch off, turn it back round, put the light back on. Okay, so guys, that's a review for the Iron Studios Star Wars Legacy Replica Quarter Scale Darth Vader. Uh, as I said before, if you have this, Congratulations, it's phenomenal. Um, and as always on the Red Titan channel, Alex and Gio, thank you very much for allowing me to do this yet again. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell down below uh, to become part of our notification squad. And uh, yeah, stay safe. And um, I'll catch you soon. Peace. Hey guys, welcome back. Pause. <laughs> okay. And then as we move up to his... <laughs> mm. I'm not really liking this. In fact, I'm not, I don't really like Darth Vader's character, to be honest with you. Okay, I like Darth Vader. <laughs>